The story starts in Corinth, which was one of the great cities of ancient Greece. At the time of this story, Corinth was ruled by a man called Periander, who lived about 600 years before the birth of Christ. We will hear more about Periander and Corinth another time, but for now I'll explain that he loved the arts, including wonderful columned buildings, paintings on pottery, and music. In this time, the most famous musician in Greece was Arion, who was born on the Greek island of Lesbos, near Turkey. Periander invited Arion to come and stay with him in Corinth and to play his music at the court. So what was Arion's music like? I'm not going to try and give you a rendition, but I can say that he sang and played the lyre, which is a stringed instrument. As he was born near Asia, I think his music would have sounded slightly Eastern. He was particularly famous for inventing a kind of song and dance dedicated to Dionysus, the Greek god of wine. Well, the followers of Dionysus were known for being pretty wild, and it seems likely that the music of Arion would have been a bit out there and had a good stomping beat to it. As he was so famous, we might think of him as a sort of ancient rock star. Herodotus tells us that he made his base at Periander's court in Corinth, but he also liked to go on tour from time to time. He was invited to go and play his music at a festival in Sicily, situated in the toe of Italy. There was a Greek settlement there. Arion travelled to Sicily, performed to great acclaim, and was paid a good sum of gold for his appearances. Like I said, he was something of a rock star of his times, and he was both mega famous and rich. After his tour of Sicily, he took a boat back to Corinth. The crew of this boat understood that they had a VIP passenger and that he had plenty of money with him. And as they were a rough sort, they decided to rob him. So when they were out at sea, the ship's captain gave Arion a choice. He could commit suicide and they would give him a proper burial on land, or he could jump overboard. It wasn't much of a choice, but Arion remained composed. He chose to jump into the sea but before doing so, he made a last request. Could he sing and play his lyre one more time? He promised that when he had finished singing, he would jump over the side of the ship into the waves. Herodotus tells us that the sailors were delighted to have a private performance from the world's most famous singer, and they readily agreed. Arion changed into the special robes that he wore for his performances, and he sung his heart out. Now Herodotus does not actually say this, but I would like to add a detail. Perhaps the sailors were not his only audience. It might be that some keen-eared dolphins heard him and gathered round the ship to listen to his music. At any rate, what happened next suggests that might be the case. Arion, as he had promised, jumped into the sea and the crew sailed away with his gold, having greatly enjoyed his last ever performance. But Arion did not drown as they had expected, because he was saved by a dolphin. The dolphin picked him up on his back and swam until he was near enough to dry land for his human passenger to scramble ashore at Cape Tynarum, on the bottom of the Peloponnese where there was a temple to the sea god Poseidon, and also the Cave of Hades, which the Greeks believed was the entrance to the underworld of the dead. From there, a wet, but very much alive, Arion made his way back to Corinth, where he told Periander the story of the robbery and of his incredible rescue by the dolphin. Now, Periander thought the story was so amazing that he was really not sure whether or not to believe it, and he put Arion under arrest. When the boat that had carried Arion arrived at Corinth, he summoned the crew to his palace. And what news do you have of our famous singer, Arion? he asked. The crew replied that he was still in Sicily and doing well. At that moment, Arion, who had been listening to all this from behind a curtain, stepped out into full view, still wearing his performing costume, 
just as the sailors had seen him last before he made his leap from the ship. They were so struck with amazement that they weren't able to deny their dastardly plot. And Herodotus tells us that he has heard this story from both the Corinthians and the people of Lesbos, and that he's seen a bronze statue of Arion riding the dolphin in the temple at Cape Tynarum, where he came ashore. So Herodotus clearly believed the story of Arion and the dolphin. Many people, however, seem to think that this is a myth, meaning that it's probably not true. In fact, the famous English historian Edward Gibbon called the story of Arion a most unphilosophical fable since it supposes the friendship of a man and a sea fish. Elsewhere, he remarked that Herodotus sometimes writes for children and sometimes writes for philosophers. I think he's using the word philosophers in the meaning of those who love wisdom and truth. <laughs>